Hello, hello, Christina here. Thanks for watching this video. I'm jumping right in here and showing you the Halloween 2021 watercolors from Yuli Watercolors. Jeannie sent these over to me and I was so surprised to find them in my mailbox. So I wanted to test these out. At this point, I had not tried them at all. So what started as sort of just an experiment to kind of try out these colors turned into something really beautiful. And I actually put a greeting on it and turned it into a card. So over the weekend, I saw, I don't know, maybe it was the Instagram algorithm. I'm not sure what it was, but I saw so many videos and reels of watercoloring artists just painting leaves. It might be the change of seasons. So we're all just thinking about all the beautiful colors of leaves out there. But I saw so many people painting leaves and it just sparked something in me that said, I need to paint some leaves too. So when I saw these colors, I thought these would be really beautiful as leaves. And in a few of the examples I saw on Instagram, um, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember the names of all the people that I saw painting leaves. There were quite a few. A lot of them did this wet on wet drop in color technique where you sort of paint the shape of the leaf first all in one color and then you come back and drop in different colors and just let them sort of mix and play with the color that's already there. So that's what I did with all of these leaves. I kind of started with the base color and then brought in additional colors just barely touch the edge of the leaf with the new color and see the color kind of bloom out and you get some really fun effects. Now these paints, I wasn't quite sure exactly what they were, but they're basically like a more opaque metallic paint with glitter, with a glitter finish, which is very magical. Um, the, the photos that I took do not do it justice. Um, usually when I create something on a video and then I take a photo, the photo shows more what it looks like in real life. But in this case, because of that glittery finish and the shimmer and shine when you tip it in the light, uh, it just looks better on video. It's kind of a weird kind of uh, opposite of what it usually is. Usually I have to say, hey, you guys are going to see what it really looks like in the photos at the end of the video. But for this, you are seeing the gorgeous glitter finish as I'm painting it. So it's really, really fun. So with these leaves, um, I kind of wanted to address a comment that I've gotten or a question, I should say, um, when I've done leaves like this in the past, a lot of people say, I could never do leaves like that. How do you get them to be the perfect shape? For me, um, having a little bit of a, an art background in college helps because I do have a little bit of that experience with painting. But I think more than that is that I really admire and observe people who paint leaves. I like to look at the videos. I really study it. And when you're painting freehand leaves like this, you kind of have to have it in your head what the leaves will look like before you start painting. It's definitely okay to kind of pencil out the shape of your leaves and kind of mess with the stem and move, move a leaf here or there. That's definitely okay. And I would still kind of call that freehand because you're, you're starting from scratch. You're, you're painting directly um, from your head. So I think I, I would still call that freehand for me. Um, but, you know, just try it practice some leaves. Like I said, this one's just started out as sort of a practice to see what the colors would do. And then it, I really liked how it was going and it really turned into something that I wanted to keep. Now this uh, stem of leaves that start with orange, for whatever reason, it just was not looking right to me. I kept messing and futzing with all of the leaves. I mean, they turned out okay. It's fine. But I wanted to let you know that sometimes that just happens. Sometimes you have some funny looking leaves and it's hard to kind of pinpoint why that happens when every other stem of leaves I was very content with, except for this set of orange leaves. It's kind of just funny. I'm going to switch back to that green color and have that be the base for this uh, last stem of leaves, but I'm not going to leave it here. I'm going to be adding some additional details and kind of filling out some of those gaps. I really love how this gold and the blue mix in with that green shade. It's absolutely beautiful. 
So another question I get, uh, I think I've used these glitter paints in another video in the past and people wondered like, hey, does that glitter come off on your fingertips when you're done? And I tested it out and you'll see here at the end of the video where I kind of uh, rub my finger on a portion of the leaves and see what comes off on my finger. I find that it does transfer to your fingertips a little bit, not a ton, but it does a little bit. So I think if you were concerned about that, you might want to uh, take your project outside and spray it with a fixative. Please, please, please go outside if you're going to do that. You need to be in a well-ventilated area. But that fixative will probably just hold all the glitter in place. The other thing that you could do, and I don't know how, how realistic it would be, but you could take a piece of clear acetate and put it directly over the top and maybe uh, tape down the edges or something. And that would just put a, a barrier on the front of your painting. You'd still be able to see that glitter and shine when you tip in the light but you'd have that acetate protecting it. I don't really know how realistic that would be. I've never done it myself, but you could definitely try that out, give that a try. Um, I have not tried anything else to kind of hold these in place. For me, when I send cards like this, I generally uh, just am very careful with it, put some tissue paper over the top and then send it off to the recipient and hopefully they won't be rubbing their hands all over it. So that is the finished painting with all the leaves. I really love how that turned out. So I'm going to stamp a greeting from the garden greeting stamp set from Simon. This thinking of you was just the perfect size that I was needing for that spot. So I stamped the thinking of you stamp in Versamark ink. And then I sprinkled on some white embossing powder. This is alabaster emb embossing powder from Brutus Monroe tapped off the excess, tried to get as much of that off from around the word as possible. And then I hit that with my heat tool and I actually heated the back of the paper a little bit too, since it started to warp. Just going from front to back helps with warping. So here I am, clean fingertips, rubbing my middle finger on that. And you can see just a little bit of glitter came off. I didn't really rub it hard, but I, I don't know, realistically, would someone be rubbing their hand all over that? I don't know. I, I guess I, I, that's, I wouldn't do that, so I don't think people would, but they might. Who knows? So as you can see, the photos just don't do it justice. You don't, you don't get that beautiful glitter effect in the photo. But I, you know, all in all, I really love how this turned out, especially when it was just an experiment to see how those colors look. Thanks so much for watching today. All the supplies I used today, including those beautiful paints, are linked down below in the video description. Um, head over there, check out all of Jeannie's paints. They are absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in another video soon.